All right, so here we go. We've got our first guest already. We have Max Heinemeyer. He's director of threat hunting at Dark Trace. Max, thanks for being with us today. Thanks for having me. Uh, all right, so uh, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about some of the threats that you have been hunting lately. We talked a little bit before, and you said uh, one of the trends you're really noticing is a lot of cloud-based threats. So uh, tell me what you've been observing. That's correct. We see a lot of cloud threats that come from all sides, really. So as more people move towards the cloud, and believe me, every single customer I talk to, every organization has a cloud strategy or moves to the cloud. As we see that, there's more and more cloud threats because the cyber criminals out there, they move towards where the money is, and that is in the cloud these days. So we see rapid shifts from the old school, low and slow moving attacks to more and more fast paced attacks. So if you think about brute forcing or smash and grab, we see a lot of attacks that just try to target Office 365 accounts, Salesforce accounts. So things that are out there where the attack surface is very well defined and companies still struggle to find the right defense because most companies say, well, it's in the cloud now, so it's secure, but there's more to it. Uh, you mentioned uh, another trend that you've been observing a lot of lately, and that is some targeted threats that are using a lot of uh, living off the land uh, techniques, uh, abusing uh, legitimate tools. So tell me a little bit about, again, what you've been observing there. Yeah, quite a lot of the targeted attacks we've been seeing lately just use living off the land techniques. So we rarely see any zero days these days. We rarely see any downloads of loads of malicious tools. We often still see open source tools like Mimikatz or tools that are out there publicly like Mimikatz or Empire PowerShell being abused. One particular incident was interesting in a government network in Europe lately where I got caught in. It's an offline network, so no remote access. And we just saw the actor move from workstation towards the main controller by writing files to the slash system32 file share over the network for the first time and just writing PowerShell files, like really dodgy, obfuscated files. So what stood out was the part that was unusual, right? That desktop never talked to that domain controller before, certainly not over the network and certainly not writing PowerShell files straight to System32. And uh, one other thing that we also talked about a little bit before that you've been on the record about before, uh, you, you're, you're an expert in, uh, in AI, artificial intelligence powered malware, uh, in terms of it being an emerging threat. So tell me about maybe one of the more cutting edge examples of where we're seeing now malware that can actually uh, behave uh, differently depending on uh, what it's perceiving through AI. Perfect question, really. So it's going to be the next paradigm shift, AI-based malware. And it can come in many different shapes and formats. But if you think across the attack lifecycle, every single stage can be augmented by AI as an attacker. So if you think about phishing, right? If malware can understand context, understand natural language, it's very simple to spin up phishing tweets at scale or phishing emails at scale. If we think about things like lateral movement, if you have malware that understands context, it knows if your computer talks to mine, or if your computer doesn't talk to his computer, it's very easy for the malware to make the judgment call because it understands normal behavior. And it suggests to the attacker only abuse this trust relationship. Or data exfiltration, for example, further down the kill chain or the attack lifecycle. If your computer normally talks to Zoom or um, WebEx, and there's a lot of data being shifted every Friday night, then the malware can learn that and actually abuse this known trusted channel for very covert data exfiltration. All right, real quick before we uh, hit your uh, final stop. Um, you know, a lot of uh, Dark Trace customers uh, use the technology to find any number of like rogue devices or shadow IT devices uh, in their organizations. And at times, you've actually found some very unusual, strange rogue devices that should not have been connected in the first place. What's your favorite example from recently? <laughs> I've got many favorite examples of shadow or IoT devices that are compromised. I think the outstanding one is a smart locker. So a locker, a physical locker with a smart lock on it. I don't even know why we would have such a thing in an enterprise environment, but it got compromised by a threat actor because it was connected to the internet and used as a stepping stone inside the environment. All right, great. Thanks a lot, Max. Appreciate it. And uh, we're on to our next guest. Cheers. Thank you very much. All right.